hey you guys, say I'm gonna make this baked, um, well it's, it's angel hair pasta and spinach and mushrooms and mozzarella cheese and some spices and then you bake it in the oven. Yeah. Oh, and I was going to talk about something else. I was going to talk about divisions within cultures, and I know that it's probably been said before, but I was like thinking about this earlier, and I was thinking, oh, I'm just dethawing or washing the spinach. It's frozen. I know, it's like I could have used fresh, but it's easier to use the frozen stuff. I mean, for this recipe. But I was thinking about, at one time, you know, I had said, well, within the African American community, within the United States, there are divisions, like, and I thought it was weird that a lot of African, uh, Africans from Africa did not get along with African Americans. And I always wondered why. So I was thinking about it, and I was thinking, you know, it's true about other cultures too, you know, like the Swedish and the Norwegians at one time didn't get along. And some Jewish people don't get along with some other Jewish people for whatever reason. It's true about a lot of different cultures. I remember the, in the Hmong culture, there was a, like certain clans within that. And then there was one clan that was kind of like, no one really talked about. And I thought, well, wouldn't that be funny? I mean, interesting is, I mean, being American, but yet we, people at that time s divided themselves into categories. Like I'm this kind of an American, I'm that kind of an American, or I'm this kind of Minnesotan and I'm not this kind. And I thought, isn't that weird that in order to feel safe within their own country, our, our own country, we needed to further subdivide. And, and I was like, why would you do that? That creates divisions. And of course, then there's this mentality of us against them, or me against them, or you against them. Instead of the mentality of we're all Minnesotans, we're all Min we're all Americans. So in in re in a lot of, or we're all human, or we're all beings of great possibility. And like I said earlier. Truth be told, there was a lot of intra-group discrimination. And whether that would be, well, even within, like, the, the sexual groups or the so-called gay and straight worlds, there was even further divisions in that, like some were better than the others and some were not so good. I mean... So isn't that strange that even within that subcategory of culture, there were still some that were considered less than... And I was like, what? How is that? How could people at that time speak so much about equality and yet subdivide further and further and further, isolating their own members? It's just interesting. I mean, I, I argued and I fought for so many people and so many different types of people because I never did see, oh, you know, you're this kind of class of person or that kind of class of person. I know I made this ring on a string as a reminder, not of anybody in particular. It's just a reminder. And... It, I 
I tend to make a mess when I cook. <laughs> Not really, but I keep it pretty neat. Um, it's just a reminder about culture. And even in some tight-knit cultures, really close cult like cult cultural bond bound people, there were divisions within that. Even religious establishments, there's divisions in that. And I thought about that idea of you know, and people said, well, why do you keep bringing up the past? And there's that saying about if people don't remember the past, they're condemned to relive it. Or if they don't learn from the past. And there's there's a lot of truth in that. And I think that's true on a spiritual level, too, on a soul level. You know? You know? That there's... I don't know. There's a lot of lessons in that in looking at that idea of what if well I said what would happen probably in the short term is that there would be confusion like within like the spiritual communities and they would be like, Well, how are you like do you want to destroy belief entirely? And it'd be like, No. You know. I want people, to, I would want people to come together and say, what can we build for tomorrow? And put down like the hatred of the past and say, how does our knowledge of events from the past, how is that going to shape our tomorrow? And I know it's like future thinking tomorrow. And I don't usually go there, but sometimes, I mean, I do in visions go to the future. And I was thinking if that pooled collective of brilliant minds were, were together, you know, what could the future look like? What could, you know, how could you know, ending divisions and religious beliefs and saying we are all from the same people. How would that make the world? And it wouldn't necessarily have to be a common law. Like, you know, some American laws were based in, in I mean, really, in some old Greek stuff and maybe even further back than that. I mean, they were changed over time with with the introduction of strong religious beliefs. And that kind of changed the intent of, of the Constitution, really, where it was all men or all people are created equal. You know, and people and, people and beings and spirits So I'm just, I'm throwing that out there because, um, well, it's just an interesting idea. And not that it hasn't been said before, because it has. You know what, I can't, I, I, I have never liked, I always thought they should make short spaghetti because people don't like to, I don't know. Isn't that how you eat it? And people cut spaghetti all the time. It's like, well, why don't you make half spaghetti then? <laughs> it's so easy. I mean, it's so simple. I always break mine. I don't know if that's the old way to do it or... And I hate to say this, but I always throw a little bit of it away. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's, it's something, something to think about.
And you can, you can just cook it on whatever temperature you want if you want to. I mean, you don't have to do any of it. That's up to you. Oh, I think we'll use this bowl. Oh, it's not good. That's the thing, too. I got rid of, like... No, I'll wash them. These are those bowls that I kept forever. And who would imagine ever doing, like, cooking and talking about cultural differences and, you know, or, like, what kind of spaghetti is what you do with spaghetti. I mean, I never thought I would be doing that in a million years. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I'm not doing any product endorsement. I just use what's at the local markets and, you know, for one, it helps local markets stay in business. And sometimes I don't have everything that I want there, so I have to go to other places. Or sometimes it's easier, I guess, to go to a large grocery store. But I like to cook, you know, on a daily basis. So, I mean, it's, you know, sometimes I get a whole bunch of food and, oh yeah, we'll do this separate. like they taught you in school. So I'm just squeezing the um, spaghetti right now. I'm the spaghetti. The spinach. Whatever. I used to make these really good things with I'm not going to say what, because it might bring back some terrifying memories. <laughs> not for me, but I mean, I was a really good cook, so. And, you know, just it's nice having kitchens that are like this too, with a little island in the middle. And to be honest, I normally grind pepper in a mason jar in, in a blender with whole corn pepper because it's cheaper. You can buy a whole bag of corn pepper and then put it in a mason jar and blend it and then have a whole, I mean, you know? Not saying that that's, it's smart though. It lasts family for a long time. I didn't have a choice. I had to get this. And then some of this stuff is just some old <laughs> recipe stuff that I keep secret. <laughs> but you can experiment with it. And at times I wouldn't even cut up the garlic, I would just throw it in their hole because I liked whole baked garlic. It was so n And it still flavors the dish. It's just that, and then if people don't like garlic, they can just pick out what they don't like and you can eat it yourself. 
And I was always like, why are people so afraid of garlic the way it tastes, smells on people? It's like one of the best smells. It's like garlic and onions, so good for you. Not that that has roots in some other, you know, cultures. As well, I mean, oh, you might think that's funny. That's my old driver's license. You know, it was a long time ago. That car got beat up so much that it got hailed on, and well, that storm, and then it stormed again and it, like hailed. It pretty much destroyed my car, the hail did. Well, I had to call somebody to come do an estimate on it. That was a very, he was a strange guy too. But, you know, it's not like, I mean, that was, I don't know how long ago it was. I'm not, keep, I don't keep track of, well, I do keep track of some dates, but not dates like that. So, I'm going to just leave him whole. Because, you know, sometimes Sean doesn't like like the big chunks of garlic. So, And then I'm just sautéing mushrooms in the garlic and some oil. Oh, yeah, I'll put this. I'll, this I always use this stuff. Comes in handy. I know I make things spicy, I'm sorry. That was one thing about it, Sabay and Mia. Never really changed your diets. You know? I didn't cook very many different things for you. I mean, if we were having Indian food, that's what you were having. And if we were having baked spaghetti, that's what you guys had. Um. It was fun, though, you know. And I remember other people were like, oh, my kid won't eat that. And it's like, um, yeah, well, I guess that's going to be hard if they come stay at our house because I'm not a short order cook. You know, I cook, like, what's for dinner, and I know your mom said that, too. I agreed with her on that. I did. I was doing most of the cooking at the in the beginning. So and then just some cheese. And you can use experiment. I mean I don't know. And I always had a thing about lactose intolerant. I honestly believed at that time it was from those antibiotics that overdoing the and well I'm not gonna get into that. But at one time I thought what did they say? They said something that antibiotics destroy the natural flora in your gut. Cause Mia, you were fine until you had those that eye infection. It wasn't really an eye infection, it was a plug I or duct of some type. Oh, and so I'm gonna just put a couple more eggs in. Oh, and then the th I don't know, just however you think you would bake bake spaghetti at. I like baking things on higher heat. That's just a force of habit, though. I told you about the olden times when, like the really olden times, when people were in the kitchen or cooking outdoors and they did not, you couldn't control temperature, I mean, very well. So a lot of things were just cooked on high heat. I don't know why. 
I don't know why I've, I've always done that. I, <laughs> that's why I stand over the stove and I suppose it's probably some, you know, buried memory from maybe cooking outside or, you know. I talked to Sean about, I don't know if I mentioned that about those. Um, well, in some native cultures, um, medicine men would often be picked by women and men. Well, older medicine men would pick them too, but women would, I mean, they would see them and they would see that they had been touched with the earth spirit or with the spirit. And they would choose them at an early age to follow in those footsteps. And often what happened is that they would have to work with the women gathering herbs because the women were really experts at gathering herbs and identifying stuff. And they also learned to watch animals eat different an He's like, <laughs> but they would watch animals eat certain plants. And that was part of their study. And then once they were older, they didn't necessarily have to collect herbs anymore. And a lot of times they didn't. And some, well, some still did, but a lot of times they depended on the novice learners or, you know, the women that were gathering them. It was a different time. And it was, it, that's part of my memory too that I'm like, I'm trying, because I see them telling me like, sometimes they're like, okay, little one, just and I'm like, well, all right, well, whatever. Oh, you can hear that sizzling. I know you're thinking, oh, a dishwasher, you're lazy, just do it by hand, save a lot energy. I know. I do a lot of cooking, though. And to be honest, I use almost <laughs> I use all the pots and pans in the house. I was always accused of that, too. I'm guilty. I always made a mess. I always cleaned it up, you know. But I did use a lot of pots and pans. I'm going to put some more cheese in this. I was just thinking about that too, and then I was like, that's probably another discussion. But there were things that you could use to naturally reheal the floor in the in the GI tract. Some people used acidophilus daily, and it was best if you kept it in the refrigerator. That's what Barb taught me to do, is keep it in the refrigerator. There were other things, too, that people were using, and I'll have to think about it. I could look it up in the books, but I'd rather just dig through my memory and my mind. Now, I did put a little bit of, like, a, a sweet spice in here, too. Well, it's not big. Just a little bit. Um, don't use a lot of it. Please don't. But it does help. It smells good too. And then chilies and stuff and pepper. Well, and then there's garlic. And then I'll probably put a lot of olive oil in it. I know you're like, well, that's kind of dry. Well, the cheese will make it pretty creamy, so it doesn't matter. You can throw some milk in it, but I like the olive oil. It's good for you, too, and I don't care what people say. There was a reason that people used some oils in the past. 
I don't know. So I was thinking also about those fundamental, like those barbaric fundamental laws, those old, like not pleasant thoughts either. I remember how severe they were. And I thought that is not, how can you have, well, once people find out that they're that's their brother and sister, they're going to be like, oh my, you know, why don't you just do it to yourself then? <laughs> that's horrible. Or it's ridiculous, really. But there's often a need in cultures to self-identify as one thing or another to make them stand out from the rest. And it's not, it's not a bad thing. But then you ask yourself, are you so different on the fundamental levels? Like on the inside, are you so different that you can't just identify yourself as part of a being of a community or of a world? with all pretty much the same basic needs or wants. I don't know. I'm not telling people how to live. I'm saying question that inside yourself. Question, are you so different from someone else? I think that's what's beautiful about children, too, in school, is that they get a look at other kids and say, you know, we all learn and we all play and we all go, we all go to lunch and we all have to do the same assignments. And yet they can see that, you know, they might, somebody might dress different, somebody might have different hair, but they're all doing the same thing. And isn't that strange how over early childhood learning, how that progresses into later adolescent learning, where those behaviors become changed. And then they start getting this self-identity, like I am me, and I need to hook up with a clique or a, you know, a group. And then that group forms. And you see how that kind of expands and expands, and then that group forms, and then they identify as a group, and then they are not this group. It's the same thing on a global level. If you look within certain things, it's fascinating. And not that I've spent my life studying that stuff, which in some aspects I have, um, and, and just watching it develop. If you want, you can throw corn, canned corn. I sometimes throw um, leftover, you know, vegetables that I've made the night before into it. Or I don't know. That's up to you. Whatever you guys want to do. And here's that olive oil again. I'm just. I know, it's something like, doesn't it make it oily? And it's like, you know what? Get some bread.
I normally never do that either. And as per my usual, I make too much pasta because I always do that. But you know what's all right? Because you can save pasta. And sometimes what's really good is if you take old pasta, olive oil, onion, well, onion too, and you take garlic and you saute that up and then put peanut butter in it and throw in the um, noodles and then put on some cilantro on that. So good. They used to have those soba noodles to do that with. I don't get those, but any pasta really works. It's just really, really good. All right, I'll let you go. Oh, you know what? <laughs> Weird conversation. Cooking and cultural differences and similarities. I don't know what that's all about.